Welcome back everyone. In this video we install the Blue Eddy AC500 and three of the B300 battery modules along with an automatic transfer switch as a whole house backup in this home in Northern Canada. In our last video we used this all-in-one portable battery backup and two giant solar panels and took this Colombian farmhouse completely off grid. But I had a few comments of people saying that it wasn't so hard because its electrical demands were much lower. Come try that in Canada, they said. Wouldn't last a minute, they said. Okay, you got it. So we flew from Ecuador to Houston, Houston to Toronto, Toronto to Saskatoon, and then from there, a few more hours north where endless golden fields meet endless lakes and forests arriving in hometown Saskatchewan, a northern community near Hudson Bay. This is the house where my wife grew up. In fact, Kara's parents built this house themselves back in the 70s and are still living here today, complete with the original harvest gold shag carpet and the plastic wrapped lampshades with the price tag still on them. And because this small town is located in a more remote area, the power outages are far more common than they are in the big cities. In fact, in the first days after we arrived back, the power has gone out twice, for hours at a time. To make matters worse, in these parts, it's not uncommon for people to have extra food storage on hand. In fact, Kara's parents have not one, not two, but three refrigerators and two chest freezers. Not to mention the furnace. With winters here getting as cold as 30 or 40 degrees below zero, it doesn't take very long for a power outage to get pretty nipply. So this seems like a really good candidate to show how to implement a battery backup system to back up all of the critical loads in a typical home. So I reached out to my contacts at the big battery brands and Blue Eddy jumped at the opportunity, offering to sponsor this video by sending out the AC500 and three of the B300 battery modules. Unlike some of the smaller portable battery boxes I've shown before, where everything, the inverter, the solar charger, the grid charger, and the batteries are all in one box, this system splits it apart. The inverter and chargers are all in this box, the AC500, and then it uses external battery modules that uh, allows you to expand up to six of these three kilowatt hour batteries to meet the reserve capacity that you need. And while this would still work fine in a portable setup, I think it's more directed at the market segment looking for a whole home battery backup solution. So let's start with the AC500. This is the brains of the operation. This is the uh, solar charger, the grid charger, as well as the inverter all inside this box. And so, let's give you a little tour, starting here on the top left, the DC outputs. Uh, this one here is 12 volts at 30 amps, but it's using their proprietary aircraft connector. Uh, next to that is a cigarette style adapter, but it's 24 volts. Now that shouldn't be any problem for most cell phone chargers or little switch mode power supplies that can handle that, but if you're just running a mattress inflator or a 12 volt motor, that's probably going to be too high a voltage for those, so you need to be careful with that. Read the warning. Then over here on the right side are the USB outputs. This uh, two on the top are USB Type-C power delivery 100 watt ports. Beneath that is USB A 18 watt uh, high speed charging ports. And beside that are USB A standard output ports. Next we have the AC output section. This is a 5,000 watt inverter and uh, starting here at the left we have three of the typical uh, wall outlets you're most familiar with I'm sure. And then to the right of that we have a 30 amp generator style plug, a 30 amp NEMA 1430, and next to that a NEMA 1450. That'll do 50 amps and this is the one we'll be using to, to power the whole house. All right, moving around to the right side of the machine now. On the top here, under this cover, we have the AC charge input. Beneath that is the solar charge input. That'll handle 150 volts at 15 amps times two. So it's almost 3,000 watts of charging just from solar alone. And then beneath that is a uh, 
communication cable that allows you to connect two of these together and then it will keep the uh, phases in sync to run a split phase system. Then here closer to the back are the two battery interconnects and those are used with these big almost like a EV charge cable plug uh, to connect the batteries to the main unit. They just push in like that and then there's a lock to engage it. And we can't forget the big touchscreen interface. Here in the middle we have the battery state of charge, a bunch of the battery parameters are listed in here. Up in the top right is the grid wattage input. If it was charging from the grid it would show here. Then the AC load, that's how much power is coming out to the AC outputs. The PV input and the DC load. And of course we can turn the inverter on and turn the DC outputs on. See those lit up there now? Of course there's zero watts going to them because there's nothing plugged in. Then we'll go into the settings. We'll just go through these really quick. There's language options to change the language. The AC output voltage between 100 or 120. AC output frequency, you can select 50 or 60 Hertz. Then the DC input source can be PV or other. That's so that it knows that it's a 12 volt car battery and doesn't draw too much. On the next page is eco mode. That shuts down the AC output section if you haven't used it in four hours. But because we're using this as a whole house backup, we're going to leave that disabled. And then the machine type, you can uh, select between single phase or split phase. So if you had two of these units, you could use the communication cable and synchronize the waveforms between them and run 220 volt split phase. Uh, next is the working mode. This is uh, more than we need to get into right now, but we can change between the standard UPS, time control UPS, PV priority UPS, or customize, which is a mashup of all three. PV would be especially useful because you can set the minimum state of charge. So the unit would always maintain an 80% state of charge from the grid so that you had 80% capacity ready in case the power goes out. And then it would charge with solar from 80 to 100%. And that would allow you to run your house loads off of solar while still maintaining a backup for if the grid went down. Next is silent mode. You can enable that and that'll just keep the fans a little quieter and uh, charging a little bit slower. Next is the maximum charge settings. Here we can set the maximum grid input current. I have this set to 5 amps just so it charges nice and slow and cool, keeping the fans and the whole system running nice and cool. Uh, you can set this up to 50 amps if you have the NEMA 1450 plug from Blue Eddy, but we don't have that. Next is PV Parallel Enable, Power Lifting, which is similar to EcoFlow's X-Boost. Uh, but what that does is just drops the voltage so that you can still run higher wattage devices. Then is the Deep Discharge Mode, if you want to force it to come back on, even if the battery is low in the state of an emergency. Uh, you could deep discharge the batteries in an emergency. Buzzer settings, if you want alarm buzzers and touch sounds. And next on this page we have Bluetooth enable and disable, Wi-Fi enable and disable, and the backlight brightness settings. And on the last page we have the screen timeout. You can set it to 30 seconds, 1 minute, 5 minutes, or never. You can do a factory reset and then lastly it shows the date and time which it synchronizes from the interwebs. And in addition to controlling everything on the little touchscreen interface, of course they have a beautiful app. You can install this on your iPad or mobile phone and it has uh, much the same interface with the uh, solar wattage input, the grid wattage input, the DC wattage output, and the AC wattage output, and of course the battery state of charge. And as you'd expect, you can turn on and off the inverter and the DC outputs via the app. Now, of all of these settings I just showed you, 
very few of them are present inside the app. You can change the UPS mode, silent charging, and 50 and 60 hertz in the advanced settings. But other than that, uh, many of these settings are missing inside the app, which I thought was a little unusual, but it is something that they can improve in the future. So that's a brief overview of the system, and I'll get into a little more detail once it's fully installed. Uh, as I mentioned before, this home has three refrigerators and two deep freezes, but they also want to have the furnace and the sump pump operational if the power goes out. And keeping the Wi-Fi on would be a nice bonus too. So the first thing I did was measure all the power consumption of the critical loads that we want to have backed up. This is very simply done with a kilowatt meter, and you just put it on each of the loads that you want to have backed up, and let it run for 24 hours to get an average power consumption. This basement fridge, for example, used 1.37 kilowatts in 24 hours. 1,370 watts divided by 24 is 57. So we can safely say this fridge uses 57 watts on average. I did this for everything we wanted to have backed up and then totaled that all up, and now we know that on average we need 200 watts to keep all five of these refrigeration units going. I didn't do these tests on the furnace motor because the duty cycle is going to vary widely depending on the outside weather conditions. Obviously it's going to run a lot less on a cool spring morning than it would in the dead of winter when it's 30 or 40 degrees below zero. But even if I approximate it, this three-quarter horse motor will pull about 850 watts, and even at a 50% duty cycle, we'll call it 400 watts on average. With all that information in hand, we can calculate how big a battery, or how many batteries we need, and how long they're going to last. These B300 modules are 3,072 watt hours each, or 9,216 watt hours combined, rounding down to 9,000, and assuming a system efficiency of 85%, we can calculate these will run all five refrigerator units in the summer for 40 hours. Of course, in the winter, it's not going to last as long. Using the same 200 watts on average for the refrigeration, but adding the 400 watts needed for the furnace, that's 600 watts average to run everything in the worst case scenario. Again, using the same math of 9.2 kilowatt hours of battery times 85% efficiency, that's 7.8 kilowatt hours of usable battery storage, and then using our 600 watts worst case scenario winter uh, consumption, 7.8 divided by 0 0.6 kilowatts is 13. 13 hours of standby in the worst case scenario. Now, of course, if all the fridges and furnace and everything was located right next to the battery, we could just plug them into the front panel and be done with it. The AC500 does have an internal transfer switch, but it's limited to the charge cable that you're using, and in our case it was supplied with a 15 amp cord, uh, so the most power that we can switch with this is 15 amps. So I would need to order the 50 amp NEMA 1450 cable to be able to utilize the full 50 amp transfer capability of the AC500. So for now, I've rigged up this DIN rail sub panel with an automatic transfer switch and seven breakers. Uh, a big thank you to the Todd in whom we trust for helping me debug this on his bench. Uh, the Amazon listing says it'll run on 120 or 220 volts, but many of the reviews said that the relay wasn't firing properly and that it was burning up the coils. And so as soon as we got it, I tore it apart, and sure enough, the relay was 220 volts and was not switching properly. And so we ended up tearing this thing all apart and replacing the 220 volt coils with 110 volt coils. And uh, while I was in there, I gave it a little bit of a mechanical tune-up, polishing some of the sharp edges on that rotary cam, and it's working excellently now. But just a little word of warning, if you decide to go down this road with such a transfer switch, make sure that you test it thoroughly before installing it. So the next thing I need to do is mount this sub-panel up here on the left side of this cabinet, and uh, then I'll pull the seven critical loads from the original breakers and relocate the wires into this new sub-panel. Then I'll install this 50 amp 
stab lock breaker in the last remaining slots on the original 200 amp panel and then I'll wire in that breaker to the normal grid side of the transfer switch then I'll also need to use some wire and go from the backup side of the transfer switch to this NEMA 1450 plug which will then be plugged into the 50 amp outlet right here on the front so I'm going to do this all off camera because I don't want the refrigeration to be down that long. So I'll bring you in once it's done and give you the tour. What follows is a brief construction montage. We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. So today is tomorrow. I've pulled the seven critical loads out of the original breaker panel here and rewired them into this new sub panel. And they're of course fed into these seven breakers and those are fed by this transfer switch. In the A position as it is now with the red light on, it's sourcing its power through this 6.3 cable to this 50 amp breaker which I have installed down here. So in a normal situation, the power comes from the grid through the 50 amp breaker, up the 6.3, into the transfer switch, and out to the seven breakers, to the seven critical loads. But in the event of a power outage, this transfer switch will flip over the other way to the B side, the green LED will be lit, and then it will be sourcing its power through this cable, which I've installed, a NEMA 1450 plug on there, and that, of course, will just plug in the front of the Blue Eddy. So these batteries are eventually going to live on some shelving on the other side of this wall here. But for now, I've just got them stacked up on the laundry machines. And I've got the AC inverter turned on and the NEMA 1450 plug running to the transfer switch all plugged in. So this is ready to go offline. If the power was to go out, this should take over. So we can simulate that by just flipping the main breaker on the house here. And I'll direct your attention to this red switch toggle here on the automatic transfer switch. You'll see it flip over to the other side and the green LED come on. Fridge number one, check. Freezer number one, check. Fridge two, check. Freezer two, Check. Because there's no light in this one. Or it doesn't work. Fridge three. Check. Okay, so now if you look here at this transfer switch, you'll see we're in the B position. And then when I turn the breaker to the house back on, that should flip over. Now with the main house breaker back on, the transfer switch has switched away from the Blue Eddy backup supply and is now back powering from the grid, obviously. And if we come in here on the screen, you can see that the grid uh, input charge is at 1700 watts, recharging the battery, ready for the next power outage. Okay, today is tomorrow. As you can see, I've relocated the batteries to the shelving and the storage room on the other side of this wall. So now this is all back to normal and here they are in their forever home as you can see stacked on this three-quarter inch fir plywood shelving i did need to cut some holes through the shelves on the back here for the big umbilical cables to interconnect the three batteries but not such a big deal and then of course i had to route the big 6-3 cable through the wall so that i can plug it in like this and in the last few days, we've done some basic testing for a few hours at a time, and everything is working like a champ. All the fridges, freezers, and furnace operate exactly as you'd expect. But I'm definitely looking forward to doing some longer-term testing in the weeks ahead. And of course, as this system is installed now, it only recharges from the grid. But, as I mentioned, this AC500 has the option to plug in 3,000 watts of solar using this included cable, and then you could very likely power all of these critical loads indefinitely just from the solar. 
it would be really sweet to have a few solar panels set up in the backyard. That way we could go and set the UPS mode to PV priority, but set the state of charge to something like 80%. That way, the AC500 would always maintain an 80% state of charge from the grid and have that available in case of a power outage, but then the solar panels would charge the top 20% from 80% to 100, and that would be used for powering all of the uh, fridges and freezers and furnace, reducing your power bill by whatever amount you're making with the solar. And this setup can easily handle six solar panels and would have no problem powering the fridges, freezer, and furnace that we have connected to it here. But we'll have to leave that for another video. If you guys are interested in such a thing, let me know down in the comments and we can maybe try and get some solar panels here for the in-laws and make another video. For now, I need to do some more long-term testing and see how long these batteries can keep all of these critical loads going. So if you're interested in the results of that, make sure you're subscribed. And a massive thank you to Blue Eddy for supplying this home battery backup system. I know it's going to be a big help to my in-laws when they're dealing with power outages, not needing to worry about the fridges and furnace when the power starts flickering. If you're interested in such a home battery backup system, I've put links to this Blue Eddy, as well as everything else I've used in the video, down in the description. An extra big thank you to our supporting channel members, especially our Elon tier member, Furious George. It's the support of these legends that lets us make these videos for all of you fine folks. Especially this month as we've been traveling, coming back to Canada to spend time with friends and family after five years traveling full-time on the road. So thank you guys very much. That's all the time we have for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.